If you would like to discover how wealthy Tennesseans lived before the Civil War, you don't have to rent a movie for that. You can see it in real life. All you have to do is travel to a lavish landmark near Mount Pleasant, as Teresa Bush did for our first stop. The mansion known as Rattle and Snap sits on a hilltop on the outskirts of Mount Pleasant in Murray County. The two and a half story structure is noted as one of the finest examples of Greek Revival plantation architecture in the state of Tennessee, and to some, the country. George Washington Polk and his wife, Sally Hilliard Polk, built the home, which was completed in 1845. They called it Rattle and Snap because George's father supposedly won a huge track of land on which the house was built in a game of chance called Rattle and Snap. The loser was the governor of North Carolina. This is just the way it would have looked when the Polks lived here. Bobby Caslow is the new lady of the house. In 2003, she and her husband Mike bought the mansion and 100 of the original track's 5,400 acres. My husband's mother is actually from this area, very old family, and as a child, she actually played on the front steps of Rattle and Snap during the Depression. So I was very, very taken with the house and it did become available for sale, and my husband was ready to retire, and we thought now is the perfect time to do it. Let's, let's go there. The reason Bobby was so drawn to the mansion is because of her lifelong love of antiques from the mid-1800s, the time in which the house was built. She'd amassed a huge collection while she and her husband were living in California, and Bobby knew Rattle and Snap would be the perfect place to showcase every single item. She spent nearly a year decorating the first floor, which is open for tours. <laughs> These pieces are pieces that we brought into the house to show what would be representative of what George and Sally would have had in the day. Now, you might find this sofa interesting. The reason I say that is because it's made by a very famous cabinet maker of the day, John Henry Belter. And what makes this so special is that it was actually carved by Belter himself. Teresa, come into uh, our double parlor. This is where people would have gathered, much like our living rooms today. This is just the way that the Polks would have had the double parlor. The draperies are scalamandre silk, and the carpets in the house are reproductions of what the Polks would have had, and they were actually made on antique looms in Scotland wow. and brought here. The Polks lost their plantation and the mansion after the Civil War. Records show the couple sold most of their belongings. But somehow, this sofa and its matching chairs were spared. The set is back home in Rattle and Snap, and it will never leave again. This is our double dining room. You have a double parlor, so you need a double dining room. Probably when the Polks lived here, they would have used this dining room in the winter as their winter dining room. They could pull the pocket doors closed and it would be warm. Or when they had big parties, well, they could just push back the double doors and use the whole thing for all their guests. The exterior of Rattle and Snap is just as impressive as the interior. The mansion has four porches. The one facing the east reminds you of New Orleans with all of its fancy grill work. The west porch looks out over the garden and it's supported by Temple of the Winds columns. And the front, ah, the front. The Corinthian columns of which there are 10 indicated wealth. I hope people get some feeling for the Polk family members as individuals. 
the Polks were very, very good people, very loving people, and they did a lot of entertaining. And I would hope that they would get the feeling of the time, the grandeur of the time, and perhaps even understand how sad the Civil War was and how these wonderful people did lose everything. There is something new at Rattle and Snap, this three-bedroom guest house. The previous owners built it on the foundation of a barn, which later archaeologists discovered had once been the Polk's carriage house, and that's what the couple decided to call the spacious retreat, the carriage house. Mike says Bobby enjoyed decorating it too. One of my wife's projects after uh, she got settled in was to redecorate it we had a lot of French antique furniture. She decided to take that furniture, which uh, a lot of it didn't go with the style of the main house, and she decorated it with all of her French antique furniture, and then she thought it would be nice to rent it as a house and just as an idyllic spot to get away. <laughs> Mike and Bobby get to enjoy rattle and snap every day of the year. They live in a rear section of the mansion that's not open for tours. Even after all this time, they still can't believe this is their home, a home they will always share with anyone who wants to visit. Every time we come up the driveway, we think, do we really own this house? And then we think, well, we might own it, but it's just for a space of time. We are just really one of the custodians of history, and everybody will tell you that.